Good morning, everyone. I'm State Senator Fran Pavley, and I'm joined today by my joint author, Senator Carol Liu, leading healthcare and environmental organizations to share some good news for kids. Today, we are taking a positive step in removing the toxic poison, BPA, from our most vulnerable population, our children. Let's hear it for the kids. With me today are members of the legislature, world-renowned pediatrician, Dr. Alan Green, actress and environmental advocate, Amy Smart, local mothers, and organizations such as Physicians for Social Responsibility, the Environmental Working Group, and Breast Cancer Fund. We are all here to say, don't let the chemical industry steal our children's health. Support Senate Bill 797 and ban PP BPA from baby bottles, sippy cups, and infant formula. This bill is carefully coordinated with the state's green chemistry review process, so we must not delay action. In a few minutes, Mothers and children will take a message in a bottle directly to assembly members, and they are BPA-free bottles. This is a no-brainer. Over 220 peer-reviewed studies report that BPA has been linked to a host of problems, including brain and developmental damage, breast cancer, early puberty, obesity, diabetes, and hyperactivity, and autism. Did you know that one out of every 150 children born in California today have an autism-related disorder? But the opposition, and the well-funded opposition it is, led by the chemistry industry, is spending millions of dollars to defeat this measure, not only in California, but in other states as well. They have employed more than a dozen lobbyists to kill this bill. This has become a real David and Goliath fight. This makes my past efforts in taking on the oil companies to clean our air and pass clean car legislation seem relatively easy in comparison. High paid chemical lobbyists are trying to create confusion and doubt. It reminds me of those past battles to determine if secondhand smoke or lead in paint was harmful. In 2004, the governor signed uh, my bill to take mercury out of children's vaccines. Alternative vaccines were available, just like alternative BPA-free products are available. And as a precaution, the legislature here in California voted for the children over the opposition of the powerful pharmaceutical companies. We can pass this bill. Now is the time to act on BPA. For each year we delay, over 550,000 babies will be born in California who will needlessly be exposed to the health risks posed by this toxic chemical. Did you know that Canada, Minnesota, and Connecticut, and more than 20 other cities and counties have already enacted bans on BPA? We can't wait. Please help me and urge the Assembly to support Senate Bill 797 when, they, when we take up the vote during the next few weeks. Now I'd like to introduce some of our guest speakers here today. First of all, Dr. Alan Green, world-renowned pediatrician. Dr. Green? What a beautiful day for change. And how appropriate that we're on the steps of the California State Capitol, because the medical research uncovering the problems with BPA started right here in California. One of my colleagues at Stanford University was studying yeast in his lab. And he observed something kind of interesting, surprising, that the yeast was making sex hormones, or at least it looked that way. The closer he looked, the more puzzling this got, until he finally realized something shocking. The yeast weren't making sex hormones. It was the plastic flask, the clear plastic flask, that was leaking the hormones into the liquid the yeast was growing in. 
And that was the beginning, almost 15 years ago, of the research into the problems of BPA. Unwittingly, all of us in the last generation have been part of an experiment, really the same experiment, where BPA, the same artificial sex hormone, has been leaking from containers into our bodies, into the liquids we drink and the foods we eat, so that today 90 to 95 percent of us have this artificial sex hormone in our bodies. And there have been numerous studies now that have very concerning studies linking this to the things you might expect. Early puberty, breast cancer, prostate cancer, changes in the brain that affect our, our development and behavior. Now, if babies and toddlers were exposed to the same chemical, at the same level that we're exposed to it, you would expect the damage to be worse, the risk to be higher. You would expect lifelong changes to be present in their prostate glands, in their breasts, in their ovaries, in their uterus, and in their brains, if they were exposed at the same levels you and I are. But they're not. Today in the United States, babies and toddlers on average are exposed to up to 11 times the levels that we are. Up to 11 times. And where's it coming from? It's coming from bottles and sippy cups. It's coming from the containers in which we store and serve and heat their food, by and large. Now, that's good news because that's something we can take control of. That's something we can change. It's a, it's a risk that we can eliminate. There's no reason for it to go any further. There are... A few naysayers that look at a few out of the hundreds of studies that don't show problems. But knowing what we know today, as a physician, as a father, I would never on purpose expose my own children to BPA. I would not do it. And it's time now for the state of California to step up and to protect its youngest citizens, to protect our children, all of our children. So thank you so much for being here today and joining in this effort. Thank you very much, Dr. Green. Appreciate your comments. Uh, Amy Smart is with us. So you don't know Amy. She is a strong environmental advocate, especially when it comes to reducing exposure to toxics and uh, one of my favorite actresses. And I appreciate her attendance here today. She also attended a a very lively press conference in downtown Los Angeles uh, last week where we had members of the communities in downtown LA uh, heavily supporting this bill because they saw it as an environmental justice issue. Amy, please come on forward. Thank you again. Thank you, Senator Fran Pavley. I'm so happy to be here today. And um, the time has come to say enough is enough. From the water we drink, to the food we eat, to the air we breathe, to the products that we give our kids, we're so overexposed to dangerous chemicals. And crossing my, future, my fingers as a future mother-to-be, I would never want to expose my kids or myself to these dangerous chemicals. And so, if you're like me, and you're fed up, and you know that the government is not protecting you on this. We, 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 hope that, we hope that the government would, but they're not. And so please join me in, um, in getting rid of these dangerous baby bottles and dangerous feeding baby products and saying yes to SB 797. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Amy Smart. Now, here's someone who's really on the front line of this issue, a local mother of two, Abrina Abraham. Abrina? Hello. I'm a mother of two, and I'm also a lactation consultant assistant at, for Sacramento County WIC in both Rancho Cordova and Oak Park. My passion is to give women the knowledge that they need to have a healthy start for their families. While I try to stress breastfeeding for new mothers, there are some occasions when mothers must put their precious breast milk into baby bottles. All babies deserve a healthy start. And drinking bottles from, that are contaminated with BPA puts them at great risk for harm. 
I serve regular, everyday working families who need to know that their products are safe. No family that I work with would knowingly expose their children to toxic chemicals. Many of our low-income families cannot get access to these BPA-free products that are sold in some of the bigger retail stores because those stores just aren't in our communities. When I go to the 99 cent store, I expect that I am guaranteed that my baby products there are BPA-free, the same versus the knockoff products and formulas that are sold in other neighborhoods. I am asking for equitable and affordable access to safe products, regardless of your education, your neighborhood, or your income level. I'm standing up for every California mom and family to demand that our baby products are safe. We know that there are affordable alternatives on the market, and now it's time to make sure that they're available in every store. Please support SB 797. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. And we're hearing that message from throughout California. Let's have BPA products available in everyone's community in all our stores. Uh, next, I'd like to invite up Assemblywoman Fiona Ma. Now, she authored the original legislation banning phthalates and BPA. She's coming up to say a few words. And I'd also like to recognize some of my other colleagues here today before she speaks. Assemblymember Dave Jones, Jared Huffman, Nancy Skinner, and who else am I missing? And Tom Amiano. I appreciate all of them uh, attending. We have a lot of support in the Senate and the Assembly for this important bill. But let's hear from Fiona Ma. I consider her an ally and a real expert on this issue. Thank you, Senator Pavley, for continuing the good fight. This is the fight that needs to continue up here in Sacramento. Two years ago, we stood in front of a 20-foot uh, uh, rubber ducky, as many of you recall. Uh, my bill, AB 1108, uh, to ban phthalates, uh, was on the floor. Industry said that this was a job killer, uh, that the science is not complete, that there would be no more toys here in California. But lo and behold, uh, we passed the bill. Senator Feinstein put it into the Consumer Product Safety Bill. It is now law. And a few months ago, we tested about a dozen toys, and they were all phthalate free. And so. <laughs> and so now. Mothers and parents and grandparents can be assured that when they go to the store that their products are safe for their kids, that they are phthalate free. And we need to ensure that our baby bottles and our baby formula is also free of BPA. It is important that we continue to put pressure on the state the Green Chemistry Council to get their report done. They have been lagging. Uh, they still do not have the results out. And because they don't, we need to make sure that we are vigilant in this effort to keep our children safe of chemicals. There are 80,000 chemicals on the market, and there's very, very few regulations or standards that regulate that. And therefore, we as a community, as a society, need to do what we can to protect ourselves if the government is not going to do it. Thank you, Senator Pavley. Let's get this bill passed and signed. Very good. Thank you. Uh, our next speaker is Dave Jones. He's the chair of the Assembly Health Committee. Thank you very much. Thank you very much and welcome to my home district, Sacramento. And it's a great pleasure to be here with Fran and my colleagues in support of this measure. As the chair of the Health Committee, I was very pleased to hear this bill. And one thing that has been very, very much impressed on me is the importance of making decisions about Californians' health based on science and data. And just two years ago, this legislature passed and the governor signed into law green chemistry legislation, which makes sure that all of the chemicals that are used in products consumed in California will ultimately be reviewed for their safety and a determination made as to whether those chemicals can continue to be used, consistent with the health and safety of Californians. So when this bill was before us, the opposition argued that somehow this bill was inconsistent with that initiative. It is not. And I worked with Fran to make sure the bill was consistent by making clear 
that the state agencies responsible for California's health as it relates to toxic chemicals, the Department of Toxic Substance Control, will have over a year to determine whether or not and what sort of regulation should be in effect. But if they don't act, if they don't act, then by January 1, 2011, we will ban this substance in these products. Even after that, the scientists at that department will have the opportunity to evaluate and make their determination. So there's nothing inconsistent in this measure with the path that the legislature has hewed over the last two years, which is to make decisions about health based on science and data. And that's why I'm very pleased to support this measure and thankful that all of you are here. And I know these babies like the bottles because a couple of them are fighting them over, over them right, now, right a moment ago, right up here. So I don't think there's any question about whether this product is going to be one that consumers will like and will ensure the safety of their kids on in the future. Thank you very, very much for your support for this important measure. Uh, thank you very much, Assemblymember Jones. Uh, his suggested amendment to this bill was was actually brilliant because right now, effectively, uh, with the Green Chemistry Council, uh, it is not up and running. And one of the arguments against this bill is we're not going to do any more chemical chemical bans because that was signed into law last year. So, in effect, there's a moratorium on chemical bans, and yet the Green Chemistry Council is not up and running. And this bill, now in the way it's stated and formed, uh, because of the uh, brilliant amendment by Assemblymember Dave Jones encourages that Green Chemistry Council to actually get up and running and review this dangerous product. Uh, next up, Assemblymember Jared Huffman. Thank you, Senator Pavley, and thanks everybody for, for being here. Uh, I'm, I'm very proud to stand with Senator Pavley as a co-author of this important bill. You know, last year California took a very, very important step uh, into the issue of green chemistry uh, by passing a bill that I jointly authored with Assemblymember Mike Fuhr uh, to create the state's first uh, green chemistry policy and to create a process where we would finally begin to look at these chemicals on the front end rather than uh, waiting until the science overwhelmed us on the back end and we had to fight uh, chemical by chemical and ban by ban. That was intended to put a good green chemistry poly policy in place for the state of California. Let me tell you what it was not intended to do. And as one of the joint authors of that, I think I can speak with some authority on this. It was not intended to mean that an agency that is underfunded, that is suffering three furlough days a month, that has been operating for months without a director, and frankly that's untested when it comes to tough political decisions, uh, will have the only voice on an issue where there is overwhelming and compelling evidence that we need to act. And that is really uh, what we've come to here, because on the one side, we have uh, an overwhelming body of independent science telling us that BPA is a problem. On the other side, we have a lot of industry science muddying the waters. Every now and then, there comes a time where we put this building behind us to a test, a test that will tell us whether it's the people's house or whether it's the special interest house. Fran Pavley certainly did that when she fought the fight for global warming a few years back. And I think all of us felt very good about the result of that. But I think we're approaching once again one of those fundamental tests about whether this capital behind us is the people's house. Senator Pavley's proposed a very, very reasonable measure. It'll protect the most vulnerable among us, our children, and it'll do so uh, in the face of an overwhelming body of independent science telling us we have to act. So let's do everything we can in the days ahead to make sure that this bill passes out of the State Assembly. I know that all of my colleagues that are standing with Senator Pavley here today are committed to doing that. Let's put this on the governor's desk and let's make sure that this remains the people's house. Thank you. Thank you very much, Assemblymember Huffman. Assemblymember Alberto Torrico. Thank you. Um, muchas gracias. Um, she, uh, the senator has asked me to, to say a few words in Spanish. I'm happy to do that. Um, estoy aquí esta mañana en apoyo del 100% por esta propuesta porque uh, a mí realmente no me interesa las peleas que estamos teniendo aquí en la Asamblea y en el Senado porque la ciencia para mí es muy clara que el efecto de este producto es negativo y causa cáncer en bebés. Uh, 
uh, estas botellas por el, el, el propósito o el argumento de que la economía, que, es, que sea más barato el producto, que sea mejor el producto, a mí esos argumentos no me interesan. Lo que me interesa, sobre todo, es la protección y seguridad de los niños. Como papá, tengo, tengo también, uh, me, me enoja saber que estos productos han sido utilizados y, y estamos aquí para, para asegurar que esos, esos químicos se saquen los productos y además de, de las acciones de la legislatura. Quiero decir que en varias tiendas, en Safeway, en Walmart, en Kmart, en Target, y varias compañías ya no están utilizando este producto, este químico, porque reconocen que es peligroso. Entonces, quiero pedir a las personas, particularmente a madres y padres, que hablen con los asambleístas, hablen con los senadores, manden cartas al gobernador y que digan que es hora que estemos para proteger a los niños y para, para proteger a la, a la futura generación. Muchas gracias. Uh, next speaker, Assemblymember Nancy Skinner, followed by Tom Amiano. Thank you, Senator Pavley. Thank you all so much for being here and showing your support for this incredible bill. And thank you, Senator Pavley, for introducing and carrying SB 797. I am in complete support of it. And it is a simple measure. It is an effective measure and it creates a level playing field for all manufacturers and all retailers, which in turn will protect all of our babies. And that's what counts. Thank you. Assembly member Tom Amiano. Thank you. I'll, I'll be brief, you know, and as a San Francisco supervisor, I sponsored a precautionary principle, which, of course, if we had that in Sacramento, wouldn't, this would not have to be in such contention. It's not about the bottom line. It's about our kids' health. I'm a father. I'm a grandfather. I'm very, very concerned about this issue. I'm sorry that it's such a fight, but it's a fight we are going to win, and it's a worthy cause. This morning, our governor said... Uh, remarking on the passing of the late, great Senator Kennedy. This is a terrible loss to the nation and to my family. Well, in honor of what Senator Kennedy represented, we want the governor to sign this bill without any contention. Thank you so much, and thank you, Senator Pavley. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right. Before we um, answer uh, questions from the press, and I want to thank the media's turnout. I don't always take the time to do that, you know, but some of the toughest bills that have gone through this legislature have only passed because of the attention of the media. That shines a bright light on Sacramento, lets constituents know some of the important measures that we will be voting on, because I know the people of California care about bills like this and would be very supportive. So let's sort of uh, balance the interests of the special interest with the public good and I appreciate the media's attention to this important issue. Uh, before I answer questions, I want to let go the parents and the children who have waited so patiently, some more patiently than others, uh, to send a message in a bottle to assembly members. They're, the message is protect our kids make them BPA free, and they're going to all the different offices. This is a great, great way to send our message. And I, know I want to thank all the, uh, the mothers and the children that came here today to join in our efforts. Thank you very much. And if you need to move, I understand how kids need to move around. Uh, feel free to get up at any time. And at this time, opening it up for questions. Yes, the question is, if I may um, paraphrase that, uh, the link to some of the medical issues. Oh, I, I can discuss it. I'm relaying my bill on the evidence of 220 peer-reviewed studies that have come forward on um, uh, directing the link to these different things. Is there one compelling directly? No, but it, in abundance of caution, there are problems in animal tested studies that show these uh, this exposure to this particular toxic does occur whether it's obesity cancer uh, on a personal level I'm very concerned about neurological issues and problems so I'm gonna let our uh, doctor comment that and I would like to say that 
not only Dr. Green, but one thing I've done this year, we have a list of dozens of pediatricians and endocrinologists and doctors who are supporting this bill. And they're supporting it, yes, as a precautionary principle, because they care very much about children. They think that there's enough evidence out there. And there are alternative free BPA products on the market that why risk this? And so you'll see a growing amount of doctors stepping forward and supporting SB 797. And, and it's not just individual pediatricians and physicians. It's the National Toxicology Program. It's the National Institutes of Environmental uh, Health at NIEH. And it's the FDA expert panel that they convened to look into the issue um, and review these hundreds of studies. And the evidence shows in animal studies where they've looked at rodents and all the way up to when they've looked at uh, close relative primates, when it's a, a placebo-controlled trial, uh, in advance, a prospective trial, yes, it causes these very things that you would expect to see in other mammals. In humans, uh, it's, a it's a more difficult thing to study because you can't give half of the babies BPA on purpose and the other half bottles without on purpose because there's already so much, so, such compelling reason to, no to believe that these hormones are causing problems. But what we can do in humans are large epidemiologic studies where you measure the levels in them and see if the same thing you expect holds true. And yes, that's happened. As part of NHANES, the biggest statistical uh, part of our, our survey of chemicals in the body, you can look at the BPA levels and the higher they are, the higher the risk. Even in adults of diabetes, the risk is significantly higher. There's a 39% increased risk of diabetes with every standard deviation you go up in BPA levels in your urine. So the, the evidence is really quite strong. The question was, if this bill is signed into law, what kinds of reductions do we expect in the next few years? We know that puberty is starting earlier and earlier in girls in the United States. And the earlier start of puberty is likely due to estrogen exposure from a lot of sources. The biggest one we're aware of right now is the BPA that they're exposed to even as infants and, and before they're even born. So I would expect to see that the puberty rates may begin to level off or increase instead of continuing the downward slope. That's one thing. Um, the rise in breast cancer is something that we've seen. It's an, often an estrogen-related tumor. Again, it's one of our biggest sources of extra estrogens that we get is through BPA. And I would say, expect that if we were to stop this, it could stop the increase in breast cancer and maybe turn the tip down on that a little bit. It's not the only cause by any means of any of these problems, but I expect it would make a real difference in public health. Uh, I, I don't know a way to quantify that. That's, it, it's, it's, that's speculation, the amount that we'd expect to see. But what I can say is that there's no reason to accept that risk. There's, when there's good alternatives available and such compelling science suggesting that it's contributing to some of our biggest health problems in the United States, why accept the risk? Thank you very much, and I'll stay around for any other questions. I, want, I appreciate everyone who attended today, and thank you so much. Let's go get them. We have two and a half weeks to get this passed.